Welcome, everybody. And today we have Ryan Sane joining us because I sort of reached out with Dimitri and Ryan after attending their free OER webinar a couple weeks ago, and I was really intrigued and wanted to learn more. So welcome, Ryan. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So excited to have you. I'm excited to be here. Like, this is cool. I've seen <laughs> this podcast around for a while, so it's uh, kind of neat to finally be asked to be here. I think it's awesome. Yeah, is and you free popped into OER the team. Redundant? What's that? Is free OER redundant? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but it is not. Uh, there are free resources but that are not OERs, though. There's so many licenses. Okay. Yeah, there's layers of licenses, like six. So, um, and then of course you can mix and match. So I think I think our goal is we're gonna talk about OERs, what they are, um, some of the different licenses, and then just see where the chat goes around these sort of things. So, if you're down, Ryan, uh, can you? It's always so weird to introduce you to Ryan, it's odd, especially um, in the field. Can you, <laughs> doctor? Can you give us a little bit about your? Can you give us a little bit of your background and then? Uh, um, let's, let's, let's hear the pitch on OERs. How beautiful sure. are these? Uh, sounds good. So my background, um, I don't know how far back you want to go. Like, um, we can go really far back. I graduated from, let's see, Eastern Washington university, then did my graduate work at WSU under, uh, primarily Tom Brigham. Uh, so old school behavior and analytic training, um, in my part. And I absolutely fell in love with the field. Um, I fell in love with it as an undergrad and then was really in the self-management side of things. Um, so I went to work with Tom, um, did a, a some fun stuff uh, uh, with friend McSweeney. Uh, she was my second uh, chair on both my master's thesis and my dissertation. So I really had that very EAB combined with ABA, but all of it in an experimental setting. Um, so it was it was really awesome. It was really really cool training. But then after I did after I graduated, I went out and did some international work, uh, and I was uh, working with Washington State University. We had a large grant to do uh, several grants, but one of them was working in Afghanistan and working on higher education. Um, law, uh, the higher education system, uh, kind of rebuilding the curriculum and rebuilding things from kind of the ground up. Um, and so we had different components since too long to get into the, all the details. But what the key was is that we didn't have a lot of money. I mean, $35 million is not a ton of money. So when you're trying doing these sort of things, so we couldn't buy curriculums. So we had to find open resources. Um, so we partnered with people all over the world, uh, primarily from some existing partners that my colleague, uh, Dr. Maria Bibi had um, in South Africa with uh, Dr. Derek Keats uh, and a couple other people that were prominent um, open software folks um, down, down in South Africa. And they got us introduced to the idea of OERs and then we just exploded that world. So then, so as by me being in that air arena, um, eventually I left um, and then went to teach at Eastern Washington University again for several years, um, went private sector after that, and now, boom, you have Sitecore, right? So Sitecore, uh, Brad and I come together to decide to offer these videos to basically take the brick and mortar paywall and crumble it because we thought that ABA was more important <laughs> than a paywall. Like, so, and they were hiding it behind universities. Like no one, not no one, but not, not your average Joe out there knows about ABA unless they've had direct contact with it. So we're like, how can we help that? And that's what Sitecore was. And we decided to do it as an OER uh, for several reasons. Number one, um, just so anybody could use it. It was just open and use it, get it out there. Uh, and then it kind of just went from there and it, it has been more used than we originally anticipated it would be. Uh, but it, part of it's just also was for our own use uh, when we're going to teach other content using it. So that's how we got to uh, doing the OERs. It was like, if this is useful for everybody and we want it out in the world. And once you've made it permanently an OER, it can't be taken away. Like someone can't just go shut your stuff down and delete it. Um, and it, it's out there. It's permanently. It's, it's now in the public domain, if you will. So um, it's ish, depending on how you define these things. But so it's out there and, and it's permanently out there. And uh, you don't have to go to university to learn all this stuff. Uh, you still have to study it. <laughs> Probably better get a book rather so, than listening to me. Real right. quick, can you give us a... Can you give us a breakdown of the OER yeah. real quick? Because then I sure. think what we can do is we can talk about yeah. Sitecore and just how much this could potentially impact. Like set that Sure. So as OERs, let's let's talk about open resources versus open education. So open access versus open educational resources. So that's really your difference. So um, if an open access resource is just a resource that you can access and you don't have to pay for. There's tons of things out there on the internet like that, um, but you don't, you can't legally own the copy. 
you can't redistribute it. Um, you can't, in some cases, you can't keep it. Like you can, they might put a timer on it uh, to where your PDF file will delete after 30 days, like an old Mission Impossible type thing. Um, you can't revise it, mix it. You can't send it out as your own. You can't do anything with it. You can like look at it and that's it. Have a good day. Uh, and, and there's nothing wrong with that inherently. Um, that at least breaks down one of the barriers, which is dollars, right? Uh, so in there's, there's a lot of restrictions for people to get access to uh, higher education, uh, and one of those is dollars. So open access right off the bat does knock some doors down, um, and that's awesome. Um, the, 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 the true OER, though, allows you to do what we call the five R's, right? So you can retain it. Right? So you can get a copy of it, you can keep it, you can do whatever, you can have it for as long as you want. That's rule number one. Um, reuse it, so you can, re so you can um, re-tag it, send it back out there, do whatever you want to with it and from that perspective. You can revise it, right? so we're going through the five R's, so R3 is revising, so you can make modifications to it. Um, so Ryan, you could download one of my videos and you could be like, you know what, he said that really crappily, I'm gonna delete that section, put a beep over it and redo it and put my face in, totally okay to do that. So that's revising. Um, you can remix it, you could take and take other sources and plug in pieces of information to create your own brand new unit. Um, and then you can, of course, redistribute it. So you can turn around and then send it out as your own. Um, so so that, that's really the five R's that make it an OER. Um, as, uh, as opposed to something that's simply open access. So the ability to retain, reuse, revise, remix, and redistribute, those are your five R's. So that's an OER. And so just to close the loop, Sitecore, the YouTube channel, um, that you've set up about how many videos <laughs> are up? Oh, uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I lost count. No, it's over 700 now, barely over 700, but we made it over 700. Uh, we, if we ever get back into the studio it, with, with a decent effort, we'll get another thousand up there uh, that we have in the queue. Uh, we either have scripted or have written out the general plans for. Um, so, so there's a lot, a lot more content that we'd like to get out there. Um, Ultimately, I would like to take everything from statistics, everything from uh, EAB world, it, like all of what would be a normal ABA type program and put it out there for free. Um, that would be a long-term goal that Brad and I have, and he's got some other specific goals that he wants to do for training uh, BCBAs and breaking down some of the stuff like you do, Ryan. Um, so, so, so we get we 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 got a lot of plans out there right now. Seven hundred resources that are available for just go out and grab them. So. Um, and for context for listeners, like, I don't know what your average video is, but I, I usually estimate mine about uh, five to eight hours to like create a video, start to <sighs> stop um, when you're, when you're like fluid and efficient with your yeah. process. So when we're talking about 700 videos, you're talking about y'all have um, uh, dedicated part of your life to be able to create things that other people can capitalize on, which is super cool. So I just want to like praise well, that and set that context. And I appreciate like, that. There That's is... I've made like 500 videos in like two and a half years. <laughs> well, um, but you all are working, we, working we, hard on these. We probably, so. our production quality for probably the first 500 was not nearly as good as your production quality. So, um, so we, we didn't have, we had a lot of resources. Number one, like I had a lot of these lectures in my back pocket. I've delivered these, these topics a hundred times, a thousand times. So some of this is just, there was no scripting. It was just sit down, put in front of a camera and chop it up. Um, so it was, it's realistically, we didn't have that, that, that front end load that, that you're talking about on some of them, but on the back end, when we started getting towards the uh, more last 150 videos or so, those are really getting up there in terms of what you're talking about. That five to eight hour mark is insane. It's like, oh, uh, but that's what you need to do to make <laughs> yeah. it quality. And that's was one of the goals is raise the quality of the field. Because if somebody's going to charge yeah. for content, they better be better than the free content. So we said, we're going to take this free content yeah. and make it damn good. So that way it raises yeah. the bar for everybody. You're like, well, I can get it for free over here. Yeah. Like, yes, good. Part of the part of the YouTube kind of culture is that sort of thing of like raise, 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 raise the bar. Like it's slowly happening that sort of way. Um, I'm interested in this for anyone that's listening. I do monetize a number of my different areas, of my content. So this is also one of those that um, I'm interested to kind of step back and learn a little bit more um, and see where this goes. So um, where do we want to start? That's a good. Oh, context man. There, we are. There's so many places. There's so many <laughs> places we can go with this. I mean, I think that content wise, you've probably talked about that stuff. So I'm just going to ask some of the more nitty gritty questions in terms of like, I mean, what are the financial implications of something like this? I mean, uh, I mean, for real though, like, and, and also like, are there, are, we talked about license, you mentioned before that there's some licensing things sure. and you talked about like a distinction between open access and uh, just regular open educational resource or whatever. Sure. Um, 
is there pushback? Is the, I mean, that kind of thing. Like, is are there people who are just think this is the worst thing they've ever heard in their life? And they're like, um, what kind of criticism do you get? Or if any, <clears throat> like, kind of uh, thing? a lot of the cris- criticism, I think, is um, a lot of the delivery. I, it, <laughs> uh, I, I tend to speak overly quick. So, so in terms of criticism of our content, that's the type of stuff we get. We get some mistakes. So we get criticism on that sort of content. In terms of criticism on the OER piece, um, it's a mixed bag. I think what you see that the biggest criticism is I think what, what we're kind of hinting at and dancing around here a little bit is how do you make money off of this? And how are you going to spend thousands and thousands of hours and have any return? Um, that comes from understanding from my perspective, that comes from understanding that just creating content is not teaching the content. So I can go out and give the world's best lecture, like, and, but that doesn't mean I'm teaching it. So when I create OERs in the past, when, when Brad and I create them now, we go, this is a resource to be used in another setting. So this resource breaks, it teaches you shaping or whatever the ter- what term is that you want to look at. Um, but then put this in the context of how you actually teach. Um, so you can use this if you want to, to build an RBT program or build um, a BCBA prep program um, that you could then have our resources be a part of. Um, we have a lot of faculty that ask us if they can use videos in the classroom. Yes, of course, and they get paid for it. Um, and then w- if they want copies, we'll give them copies. If they want to do it through YouTube, we'll get the 14 pennies a year on, um, <laughs> on the monetization. Um, so it, monetization sucks on YouTube for small people like oh, myself. Yeah. Um, but it, it's, it's, it's a pittance, but whatever. At least they're doing something, right? Um, so, the, so from that perspective, from the financial perspective, the criticism is why would you waste your time on something you're not going to make money on? It's like, well, you have to think about the business model differently. We're not making money on the videos, but when we start teaching and when we offer CEUs, when we offer um, RBT programs and all that stuff, like I've already mentioned, that's when we're going to charge you. <laughs> we're going to put 700 free videos into a course that you pay $14 million for because we're that good. Right. So that's, that's when we get the money. That's, so. that's funny. Cause that, uh, you know, that's what Ryan and I talk about the podcast all the time. And like sure. people underestimate how much time it takes to, to do anything like this. <laughs> I mean, yeah. they, they like, you know, like you, I, like I'm already no life my goats. Like, and then the <laughs> podcast makes it like great. And this is not the, yeah. to, to stroke my ego or anybody else, but I'm mean, like, just the, the thing is that, Sometimes you do something for the love of the game, you know, and it's sometimes you do things that are just in accordance with your values. So when you think, in my opinion, when I hear something like an open educational resource and I think about the science, like I get kind of I get super pissed about journals being behind paywalls, especially low, especially low impact journals. (laughs) <laughs> where a publication is going to get 78 reads across its entire I lifespan I saw since that 72 only, I think I whatever. saw that like 84% <clears throat> of uh, published articles never get cited even once. Yeah, so it's like so like I have a critique of the the non-free or the non-open access I, and I guess I didn't realize that there was a distinction, but, but I guess that's great because it's like that veiled language of free. It's like right. access to healthcare versus like a fucking guarantee. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, it's weird how yeah. like <laughs> those words seem to overlap a lot. <laughs> you know, like cool story. But, uh, you know, like the, the, the same thing with education. It's like, you know, yeah. science should be free. You know, it's, yeah. it's like those guys who invented insulin, right? They created insulin. They created a thing to save people's lives. They gave it to the world for free. And then somehow it got skewed and flipped and turned on its head. And now it's, it's, it's being gouged to where people are dying. And like, when you think about something like the science of behavior change, which is what we do. And you think about the research and how inaccessible it already is just because of the technological language that we use, you compound that by adding it a pay, by adding a paywall to it. And you, you start creating this like weird fortress around you. Like it's a moat where it's like, we don't, we say we want to go mainstream, but we really don't because we're really (laughs) comfortable in our little in our little fiefdom where we can have you know yeah. these these different high impact authority figures kind of describe and dictate the terms of education and something in my opinion like open educational resources undermines that specific stranglehold on the knowledge base on the understanding and yes. on the people's ability to play with those ideas a little bit and and flip them and 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 get a broad perspectives that may have yeah. may have a little bit more of a mainstream taste to them so, uh, yeah, man, I mean, why would anybody want to do this? I don't know. Like, I, because it's fun because yeah, it, watching people learn is amazing because and, yep. what the fuck? 
because you, you do, what, yeah, you get all that stuff. And also like, you know what you were saying, like there's an actual marketing guy, Gary Vaynerchuk, who wrote a book called jab, jab, right hook, who literally talks about the modern, modern social media strategies. Okay. That explicitly say, listen, we live in a world of free to pay. Okay. So like you give the, everything away for free. And then once you've built number one brand, but th the brand through particularly providing quality, providing high value, providing useful things to people, then the ask is worth it. And then you cr actually create a loyal customer base that wants to support you, that wants to be with there with you and believes in the things that you do. So like my mean, response to those are go fuck yourself. But oh, what was that again? <laughs> you mean we're talking about manipulating, motivating operations? Is yeah, it's weird. Yeah, it's almost I, like the shit something. is behavioral, right? It's so, yeah, so it's bizarre. Odd. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know. I think for the science, like OERs make a lot of sense to me. I just, yeah. I, I do think there's some fair criticisms though that are worth noting. Like sure. who does regulate the quality of it? No one. You know, how do you guarantee that sure. the information is good? You yep. know, how do you ensure, you know, that kind of, those kind of qualitative sure. questions I think are fair. Correct. That was one of the downsides in the webinar that you guys did was that people can take it and use it for like evil evil yes they can cut it up and uh, they can do a deep <laughs> fake on us you know that's i mean that's and that's a huge <laughs> risk right like okay we're going to take we're going to take somebody's words um dimitri you release your podcast somebody goes out there they chop it up into little pieces they spin your words around completely and all of a sudden you are contributing to the evil of the world um the the combat for that uh is to make sure that yours was known first and is more popular uh, because eventually people will find out the, the, the truth, but you can't avoid that particular problem that, that specifically unless you lock everything down. And there's ways to do that. You can do it, it becomes an open resource, not an open access, you know, not an OER. Um, and some content, I would argue, is probably you don't want things being mixed up too bad in, in certain areas. Um, I haven't run into that problem with ours yet. Because we're obviously not that big, and by obviously by us, and I'm talking about our field. You don't have Putin out there grabbing copies of whatever we're doing and turning it against his people. Maybe he is, but I don't know. You know, so you don't see that sort of side of <laughs> the the evilness, but the potential is definitely there. Uh, there's What's no the Russian question hack about of that. a stimulus. That was how Cambridge <laughs> Analytica got so big. They used That's, your guys' videos. <laughs> I highly doubt that, but whatever. <laughs> I'll happily take credit for that. <laughs> Especially since they were before our videos, um, so that that was a, a weird sort of thing. Well, um, how, how do you feel? What do you? So like, I guess I don't know. Have you ever had any discussions with with like journal editors or people like that that are in those types of positions that can defend the idea that they want to charge forty bucks for an article? Or I'm sorry, thirty nine ninety five. I don't want to. I don't want him. To I am. Uh, putting me in that sort of context is not a good mix. I, yeah. Those those types of people, I do not. <laughs> I get a sense. That's not. I mean, I'm just yeah. kind of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't buy it. I, I really have a hard time with journal articles, <laughs> especially being behind paywalls, especially when it's a, a public institution that produced the research, because those authors are not paid to produce. The, the authors are paid by tax dollars primarily, mm -hmm. um, and, and then then they they generate the research, not just the grants. review yeah. process is electoral and. <laughs> Free, yeah. like I'm a reviewer yeah. on more than one or just one right now. I think I don't know. Anyway, I'm under, I've been a reviewer. I've never been paid for that. There's a ton of work that goes into being a reviewer. There's like, a ton. I, I was telling them before we hit record. There was two OER publications in behavior analysis. I was asked to like guest oh, review, and um, about a year, year and a yeah. half ago, and it was it was uh, a lot of work. Like I, cause I was making sure to read all the stuff that was cited and like kind of checking those sort of things. And, and, uh, yeah, it's, it's nuts. Um, it's nuts that some of those things are paid for. I, and my understanding is it's, uh, the publishing entity that retains like all of that, that right? That they do. And, um, there's obviously there's some out there that, um, you can request to have yours released open, uh, but uh, they, they typically retain full copyright over your content. Uh, you have to have, you only get so many copies that you can give out for free. Uh, you can't release the, the information openly as a faculty member or sorry, as somebody who's published don't have to be faculty, obviously. Um, so th so there's, there's so many restrictions and it's all designed to make the publisher money, period. And that just yeah. like, like uh, Dimitri said, science should be open, it should be out there. Uh, I, I think you're, I think it's a zeitgeist, maybe. Um, I mean, even the times that we're experiencing right now during these uh, the riots, uh, I think that's part of it. Like, 
to me, it feels all related, right? So when systematic, a systemic oppression of a people or a group of people, some of that isn't just police. Some of that is access to academia. Glass ceilings in academia still exist. Um, color ceilings, if you will, from my perspective, still exist. You don't see that penetration. Why is that? Um, well, how do you get access to these resources? How do you get access to university systems? How do you get access to the million plus dollars a year that these universities pay to access things like Springer Link? It's insane the costs that go into accessing these the science. So when you then <laughs> when you start to break down those barriers, people are going to get pissed. Um, luckily, we have not had that reaction. We haven't had someone show up and protest us somewhere. We get cheers, very few jeers, but we get quite a few cheers when we show up at ABAI and talk and sit with people and like, we love what you're doing. Keep it up. Go, you know, that sort of thing. So same thing as you, Ryan. I mean, people, you know, Ryan's a hero. You get out there and everybody's like, we love you. So it's great to watch. It's fun. Um, <laughs> yeah. Ryan's like an ABA beetle. Medium. Yeah, he is totally. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just Ryan. <laughs> you know Ryan O'Donnell? I do. Yeah, yeah. all yeah. the time. <laughs> He's so dreamy. What's crazy to me is it's just a byproduct of uploading Isn't stuff on the internet. Like that's that's what that is. When you, uh, I mean, you make me blush. I remember walking around with. <laughs> I was walking. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, Dimitri. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if we can get him blushing. Um, we're yeah. Look at my face. I'm right? like a tomato right yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> um when i was walking around with y'all at avi last year you had uh um what's his name the the mascot oh uh nicodemus with us yeah nicodemus yeah, yeah dude people were recognizing nicodemus from the videos oh, yeah. and uh and whatnot yeah it's uh it's a weird it byproduct is. i do the same thing when i see uh i met one of my uh, kind of like most recent favorite YouTubers about three months ago before COVID for, for breakfast. And like, I keep my chill, but I was also like, you're just like, dude, I, I listen to your stuff four times yeah. a week. Like you're right. the best. And you're, you're right yeah. here in front of me. Um, it's this cool byproduct of the internet. It is. Um, it's weird. It's, yeah. Stardom. So yeah. OERs. Yeah. Oh, so and weird. then back to, back to the quality control issue uh, um, that I think that is that core, or one of the core pieces of all of this is um, the way that you get quality control is by allowing people to communicate, right? So if we put something out there and we've made mistakes, like we made some blatant, <laughs> one of the first video I did on uh, um, cusps and pivotals was wrong. I mean, it was just wrong. Um, so it's like somebody said, well, I think it's this way. I said, you're right. Video deleted. Um, and then we went back and redid it. <laughs> um, but that sort of being able to allow that and, and putting it out there in public. Um, so you can get people like a uh, Dick Malott or a Jack Michael can comment on your stuff. It's, it has the same approach as Wikipedia, right? Um, so Wikipedia by itself sucks. But when you start to look at the references and over time, that will matriculate into a really quality resource. It can be hacked temporarily and damaged temporarily. Um, but over time, that tends to tends to wash itself out. Uh, but that's and, a pretty annual contributor to Wiki Wiki Foundation. I I think Wikipedia is the most one of the most amazing things ever. I, I agree. It's um, like people shit on it as a resource, but it is literally an aggregate of of communal yep. provision of knowledge for 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 the sake of it. It's it's a beautiful thing. Sure, not um, a primary resource, but it's got a lot of them listed. No. But it sure, and it does. It has a lot of primary, and it also helps you at least understand basic concepts. You're just a layperson. Like, I mean, like, not everyone needs to operate at a, at a graduate level understanding of things. What? I mean, good, inf <laughs> I mean, yeah. And also, like, as a fact check, too, just a, just a quick little fact check. Like, sure. what is the Insurrection Act? Let me look this thing up just real quick and just have an right, idea. It's funny like, you did that today, too. <laughs> what is, what is yeah. the difference between that and Posse Comitatus? I don't know. Let me just make sure I understand this clearly. <clears throat> not, you know, not to just, these are just random examples I'm plucking out of my head right now. But, I mean, like, why do these things the, matter? So? The quality control thing is interesting to me because most of the time I feel like the critique's coming from people that may be more equipped on the knowledge to be able to describe sure. it, but it usually stops there. Yeah. And, and, and the only way you're going to get around that is by either collaborating, working with those people as a part of the process, um, stepping aside, I guess, is another solution and just like quit your complaining um, or just like create your own yeah. content out there. Um, that, that's the biggest. There's one, I think the creativity piece is the that's it. One. Yeah, I know we talked about this on uh, with uh, Liat and Casey when they're on here, but the behavior bitches episode, one of the number one critiques they get is just like 
who said you guys are allowed, uh, you ladies are allowed to like be uploading this sort of stuff. And I'm like, who said they can't? Yeah. Like, and why don't you just go make it or create or like hang out with you know like that's I, that's always my ploy for people. It's just like why why don't you be a part of the change if that's really what your concern is? Um, and it's in my experience, it's only been easier to make high quality content when people that have that knowledge say yes. That's that's like the easiest content to make. So I mean, the big thing too is just like there's such a divide in the world that we live in, man. Like I mean of course there's always going to be a need and a place for peer review. Like those journals are, are absolutely necessary to ensure the highest level of scientific rigor and evaluation and critical analysis. Like, yes. However, on the, on the inverse of that, the way people learn in today's world, it's reading is difficult for people. Number one, to find time and their willingness to commit to it in any capacity whatsoever. Visual and audio mediums are taking over the space of learning in general and I think going through something like COVID is starting to highlight the fact that like everyone was all hung up on this whole in-person learning thing. And now that online is now everybody's an online learner and it's not that bad, you know, right. like it's not like for people who were totally against it. So that means that if you're going to be engaged in a visual medium, if you're going to be engaged in an audio medium, you, you need to number one, be able to have that knowledge base and have those skills to match whatever teaching that you're doing. But number two is you have to also like, yeah treat that as the entertainment thing like i was just recently actually watching a thing on uh <clears throat> i was just going through my little uh adjunct training thing and you know they said something that i actually yeah. i totally agreed with i'm like holy shit i actually totally agree with what they're saying right now like and usually i'm just mr oppositional but and they're like they're like listen <laughs> when you're going to teach something to somebody you got to think of yourself as a player on a stage and it's showtime like you are the entertainment committee part of that is you 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 market and you play in the world of attention you control people's attention. And in order for them to learn, to be receptive, in order for them to be able to be engaged, you have to be engaging. You have to be able to maintain their attention. You have to be able to do those things. And, um, you know, OERs in the way that you do it, I think, it's, Brian, the way that you do it, and the way that we try to do it here is, you know, we keep it fun, we keep it light, we keep it entertaining, but we always focus on the substance too. Like that stuff is, a, at least for me, as far as a value, like the hard shit matters. Like, they, they're going to get the yep. most clean perspective that I can provide from the, to them based on whatever I've read from clean literature. But yeah, I'm going to say fuck a lot. Like, because that's just who I am. <laughs> and also it, it helps, you know, it, hurts, it helps take some of the sterility out of the content. It's just like, I, I just value that very much. I think creativity is a huge piece. And I think OERs are an opportunity for us to do that. Because, I mean, we are a McDonald's nation, man. We need fast food learning just as much as we need fast food yeah. McDo burgers. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just the way it is. So could, I, I, I love it. Yeah, and that's, uh, that's we did a, I did a talk uh, several years ago at, uh, it was a technology boot camp for university and there's room was just faculty. It was all, it was all faculty. There's probably 60, 70 people in there. And the idea was, I was talking about flipped learning, right? So um, where you, where you do your, lectures outside of the classroom and you come to the classroom and learn something else, right? Um, it's basically PSI. Let's, let's be blunt. So uh, without the fancy, without the, without the rigor, <laughs> uh, exactly. you can make it rigorous, yeah. right? And, and we did, you know, I, I did make it rigorous in terms of PSI course, but my whole point was kind of what you were getting at, Dimitri, is that when you're standing up in front of a classroom, you are edutaining, right? You're, you're entertaining exactly. people for that attention, maybe get them hooked on the field. So they'll want to read more and go into graduate school and learn. Right. You're definitely not teaching, you know, standing up in front of the classroom, giving a lecture isn't teaching. Right? That's a different thing. It's lecturing. Um, some people might learn as a result, but you're not doing the teaching. Um, there's other ways to do teaching that actually produce behavior change. So the really fascinating stuff about online content is that you do have the ability to start differentiating that sort of yeah. thing. So while it is extremely uh, time intensive, resource intensive, that's how. When you see things like Head Sprout yeah. Learning, we've talked about them at one point on here, I think. Um, they they were able to differentiate learning for uh, children that were learning how to read and comprehend what they're reading. And I've turned that on twice in classrooms where it's this online computer-based program that you press play, everybody starts. And within like 10 or 15 seconds, it might be a minute, I might be exaggerating here, but it's really freaking quick. You see the differentiation happening on each program based on the learner's responses, right? And like... That was for me always the dream of behavior analysis, reading about Skinner's uh, technology, yeah. teaching, and things like this, right? So, so yeah, it's uh, 
it's it's sometimes really interesting that there's that opposition when you look at the history there. And then to bring it back into Gary Vaynerchuk and that idea, the one thing that really convinced me after hearing him say it like 48,000 times was he, was he was like, people people consume content and he says, I think three different ways, written, audio, and video. And I was just like, I learned about behavior analysis through written. Like I talked with people and there's some videos and stuff, but I was just like, oh, like that's where when you're publishing this article, I think there's so much hard work that goes into things that if you can figure out how to repurpose it for those other mediums, you're only going to get more return out of all the work that you put into there, right? Um, I think we're starting to see this. I think we're going to see more and more of this oh, it's in the coming. future in behavior analysis. There's a couple of big names that just yeah, released gonna, their, uh, their special video series and stuff coming out. Just on the Facebook feed. Yeah. Well, I, I think you're also <clears throat> going to see, um, I think you're going to see that. I think you're going to see people... Uh, starting to say, hey, I've got a book coming out. I've got a publishing thing coming out. Um, what I want to do is kind of hit the cycle on podcasts in the field and yeah. things like that. You're going to see the same thing that you see in those other models, right? Um, and I don't know, hopefully it comes um, and it, it just helps the field as a result of that. Um, there's missed opportunities was is what I think there from not repurposing your content. Well, I mean, ways. even just like we've had to dive into some really deep EAB papers and to read an EAB paper is like mind numbing. But then you watch one of the authors get up for squab and you watch a squab tutorial and all of a sudden you're like, oh, I kind of get it when they describe their experience in the lab. And I get what you're saying with your and how this could be applied. And it just makes way more sense. Man, I wish EAB was more entertaining for people because it's so it's like the good it's like the real it's science good. of what yeah. we do that's that's what hooked me on the science <laughs> in the first place was eap it was like the fact that all of these species learn in similar ways and i'm like yeah. and there's a common thread among all of it give me more like <laughs> I know. Just, yeah, yeah. the <laughs> models too the beautiful models that they get like they can reduce human it, the human experience the mathematical equations like that is yeah. like there's a, there's such a beautiful thing, beautiful simplicity and complexity all at the same time. Yeah. But the papers read like an so alien odd. language in, written in <laughs> stereo instruction <laughs> format, dude. Like it's like yeah. fucking <laughs> impossible. <laughs> like <laughs> alien language and stereo. Instruction I mean, like for format. real, man. Like it's just like what the fuck are you saying right now? Like these aren't are these even words? Like. <laughs> I, admit, I don't I speak your robot language, bro. Like, <laughs> what the fuck are you saying? So, I mean, like, it's 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 unfortunate that they are like not just behind a paywall, but they're also behind this like esoteric, cryptic internal lingo too. You know that 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 is a very much an issue as well. And I think that's what I mean. We're in a podcast environment now. There's video. There's all these other environments. That's what the creator's job is. And from where I sit, right. So you got these people creating these amazing journal articles, amazing studies, and um, then the the four of us can go out and interpret them for the world. We might have four different takes from that article and we might not all be exactly yeah. right. But if you listen to all four of us doing something, you're going to catch some different pieces and some different ways to think about it. And boom, now you've got multiple exemplars. Oh my gosh, are we doing behavior analysis again? Yes. And hopefully the DBA sees that and goes, wow, holy cow, they're doing, you know, the, uh, the dissem they're disseminating ABA in a way that's um, unique and, and what we always decided yeah. in follows the science as well. So. Yeah, From your I, perspective, what's yeah, yeah. a good amount of time to keep people's attention for uh, like what an OER? Like, what's a what? What have you found we, that like is we is missed good? it? <laughs> oh yeah, uh, we're man. long form. <laughs> Pe uh, people should put us up on the background and just be <laughs> and, and like have headphones in so their kids can't hear it and just be okay with it. Yeah, that's for sure. Demetri, I don't know if you watched any yeah. of my videos, but I'm speaking about this quack on all of my videos because that way we can get through an entire chapter in about They're two about and a half minute. minutes. I know. I like. I, I, uh, I did watch that. That's why I was curious if like you were intentionally do like if you're trying to keep it under a minute and a half, like ninety seconds. Because you had the uh, one the, minute series too. We had the yeah, we had the uh, Penny Packers Pedant series just just for fun. Uh, we said, you know what, what can we do in a minute? And I was, I got tired of listening to faculty and my colleagues like try to describe reinforcement. It take them thirty minutes to give a definition. I'm like, are you kidding me? Behavior increases as the result of application removal of a stimulus. You're done. Like yeah, that. Move on. <laughs> uh, can we do that in a minute? <laughs> yes, we can. So that was what our Brad and I was like. We can do this in a minute and give an example. Um, so we would practice um, the speed of the lecture. Not so much. That's more of a shaped thing. When I get up in front of a yeah, classroom, I'm a totally different person. And when I get in front of the camera, I'm a different person. Even then, right here, uh, it, it's a different. It's a, it's a persona that you put on. At least I do. Um, that delivery of content and that high paced boom, 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 boom. And that's been reinforced by students having to attend tighter in the classroom. So they'll attend to the words, um, and then you test them, and you grill them, and you go over it. 
you do it again and again, but you make it fun. I mean, all of that has kind of shaped up that, that, that lecture style of speaking very quickly. Um, there's a video on it that I did because I get, that's what I'm probably, I don't know, 80% of my comments I remember watching it. are, you guys talk too quick. Like, really? <laughs> like, slow it down. It's YouTube. Like, rewind it. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Click, go down, rewind. I remember <laughs> yeah. that one. Um, <laughs> the other, the other side is, uh, yeah, the, I guess the, the short form that you guys do, um, sometimes gets punished by YouTube oh, yeah. too. And like things still perform. Like it's, <laughs> it's, it's harder to do short form generally on YouTube since they're like looking for longer watch times, but you all do pretty, pretty damn good at those numbers getting up there. Sure. So it shows you like this stuff is really what people yeah. are looking for. When I look at the analytics, at least that I see from you all. Yeah, stuff. it looks, so, it's, um, <laughs> you look at the, don't ever look at average video like, like watch length on our channel because you've got so many, you have 400 videos that are one minute long. And then, but, and then to get back yeah. to your question, Dimitri, 10 minutes is kind of where we like to cut it. Like we don't like to go longer than yeah. that. Um, you could go for an hour, but that was that's antithetical to the whole point of doing chopping them up into little pieces right. in the first place. And so um, the mix match. And about that eight to about that eight to minute eight to ten minute range is what I've been told sure. as well for uh, online content. And we guessed right. Um, that's <laughs> and the only reason we guessed that that was uh, deliver a lecture in the classroom. At what point did the students start doing this? Yeah. You know, and it's your 10 minutes in. Change topics, make a new joke, and go. Like, switch it up. Uh, because they've habituated to whatever you're talking about. So, go, go, go. You know, yeah. so. Change topics, make a new joke, yeah. and go. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how much behavior analysis lectures would improve as a result of some teaching on joke telling. I'm not going to say that we um, have a... <laughs> we're thinking about that. Let's put it that way. <laughs> so, if anyone wants to collaborate. Did, did somebody so what else did we not hit on thing? OERs? Somebody did a joke telling thing. Did there Mark was... Did a joke telling thing? Mark Stu so did some humor episodes uh, over on Why We Do What We Do. I know he was the guest for two episodes on humor. Um, yeah, the I guess what else on OERs? Uh, do we cover the basic concept? Did we cover the? We could do the licenses really yeah. quick. Like we could. Zip yeah, the can licenses. we do that? Because I, yeah. honestly, I don't understand the licenses. Could you explain that to me? Sure. Um, the CC right off the bat on, on your Creative Commons licenses. CC just stands for Creative Commons, um, so that doesn't mean anything in and to itself. So um, then you have all the little symbols followed by letters, right? Um, so sometimes people use the symbols alone. Sometimes they'll use letters alone. Um, sometimes they'll use both. So the first one is the little human, like it's just a little person. Um, it's a dark person with a white circle, uh, and it says uh, it stands for by. That's just attribution. You're just you're just giving people credit. Like so, um, so a CC by license just literally means, um, hey, I got this from Dimitri. That's it, done. And and if that's the way you want to license your material, and that's the way we license our material, uh, for the most part, I, there's some situations where I might choose some others, but for the most part, that's a true OER. Um, so you can you can retain, reuse, remix, revise, redistribute. You can do all of that stuff with a buy license. All you have to do is give credit where you got the content from, uh, and it's yours. Then do whatever you want to from there. Do you have to specifically um, register that, like with a trademark uh, office or copyright uh, office, to, in order for that to be the case, question. or you just have to ask? No. You just have to necessarily put that as terms of usage, and then if you decide That's to go it. back and they haven't attributed to you, then you can make a legal matter out of it if you chose. If you, yeah, exactly. You, if I you mean, make a, you yeah, wouldn't not, even right. Then, you don't have the money, but to, I mean, so like, you can get yeah, paid for the yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Hey, you didn't say you got this free thing for me while you're giving it away for free, dude. Right. <laughs> Support my GoFundMe. So that I can I'm going to spend $8,000 on a lawyer. <laughs> right. Uh, but no, you do not have to register it. Um, I think it was 74 was the Copyright Act when that when that thing changed, right? So um, it, it, since then, you haven't had, you don't even have to register to get copyright, right? It, it's it's implied when you create content. Um, so you have to choose this, right? So you, so you just, like you said, you, you put it in a... A usage thing. If it's in a document, you use a lot of paragraph. You can just put the logo. Most people just do the logo. They just like copy and paste. Go to Creative Commons, yeah. place the boom, and put it up there. Um, then when you upload on YouTube, it's an option yeah. as well. Um, so some platforms will let you select like the license type upon sure. upload. Um, the CC, but the next one is SA, which stands for share alike. That's the one that that's the copy left. It has a copy. It has the backwards. It looks like a backwards C. It's just a circle with an arrow on it. Um, so it looks like a backwards C, but that's it. So um, share alike simply means that you can redistribute this content, but when you do, you have to choose the exact same license that I chose. So, um, so with a, with a CC buy, you can switch your license and you can say, okay, so Ryan can grab one of my videos and he can say, you know what, I'm going to use this. I'm going to modify it a little bit, but then I'm going to tag a, I'm going to put a, a, 
a no derivative on it. So he can add another layer that says, now that I've made this, you can't take mine and derive anything from it. It's stuck. It is what it is. Don't use my content in any other way other than the way it is. So that's, that's one of the other ones we'll get to is no derivative. So SA simply means that you have to share a like. So you can do, do whatever you want to do the content, but you have to keep the license level the same. Uh, does that make sense? Yeah, no, that's, uh, yeah. So, I mean, absolutely. So, then, then you can combine these things in any way you want. So now you have a, a buy and then a buy SA. Um, so a buy SA is also a true OER. After that, there's two more that might be OERs, but aren't, aren't, aren't automatically OERs. Um, and that would be the buy NC. So NC means non-commercial, right? So, um, so if you choose non-commercial, it means no one can basically, this is this where it gets really sticky uh, because it's not super clearly written and they did it on purpose. Um, so the, the no commercial means you'd not be able to make appreciative monetary gain <laughs> off of the docu off of the, uh, the work. What does that mean? Nobody knows. So it's really loose. Um, some people just don't want other people ripping off resources to make money. Right. Um, and that the publishers do that, believe it or not, they will go through the internet and they will pick everything that's a CC buy. And then they'll look at the stuff that's good and they'll put it in their textbook. Then they'll charge you a thousand dollars for the textbook. Like that's just not okay. It defeats the purpose of the OER in the first place. So there's reasons to put that non-commercial, um, license on there. Um, I, I'm a little more open with it for the most part. I'm like, yeah, whatever, don't care. Like, you want to take my stuff and make money, that's fine because I'm going to try to be in your face so much that if you're using mine and making money off of it, everybody else knows that it was already for free and you're doing that and you better have something else to add, in other words. So, um, and then what's the other one? The other one is the ND, which is uh, has to, no derivatives. So it has to be exactly the same. You can't change it. You can't modify it. It's just you can redistribute it. You can add it to it. So what does no derivatives allow you to do? Uh, no derivatives allows you to retain it, keep it. You might be able to reuse it. it. Just depends on what you're doing with it. And you might be able to redistribute it, but you can't revise it. You can't remix it. So if you're really worried about, hey, I said this in a particular way that I never want screwed up, then you can tag it with an ND. Um, but that will immediately take you out of the core category of open educational resource and it becomes open access. So there you go. That's your licenses. And then how you put those together is really and what makes the difference between an OER and not. And you can mix and match all you want. Nice. What, what, what Damn, do you do, done. Ryan? Me? No, Ryan, other Ryan, other Ryan. What other do I Ryan. do? <laughs> <laughs> so mine's, um, all my stuff's uploaded as a, uh, just YouTube standard license. And there's a couple episodes that are listed under the Creative Commons. I think it's the two that I've done with Ryan and others that have been on <laughs> Open Educational Resources. Um, and for me, it was like I didn't even know about the term and think about it when I started the channel. And that's just the standard mm -hmm. settings that yep. they give you upon your upload. And then I think it was about six months into uploading stuff where I met you all and I first heard of this. Mm -hmm. And then it was about a year later where I was just like, I need to learn about sure. this. And it was still on my list. And I've attended a few things, even shot another episode with them on an update on OERs when they were oh, starting right. up the SIG. Um, and I've always been waving the, I haven't done my homework flag, which is not a, a great one, but um, the one that I've been waving essentially. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know which to switch it over to. So for me, the, I've shared this with them before. Like for me, it was, uh, I know that there's a number of organizations that are like pull in videos as like part of a training and things like that. Pulling a video is cool, but, um, I've had a few courses that try to like pull in your, your hour long talk to like replace the yeah. teacher's lecture. And it's stuff like that where it's like, y'all yeah, like lazy as fuck really like just lazy. Um, and i've had a number i've had a number <clears throat> of people that reach out they're just like yo this is an amazing hour do you mind if i use it i'm like go for it like that's totally fine and for me it's that weird like what's your intent yep. here um and i just wanted to educate myself and then select the one that made most sense i probably need to go video by video block off a day and just kind of go video by video off of this knowledge what? of which license type, but it was just, does that make sense yeah. to meet you? It was yeah, just kind of no, like this I, the, weird, it was easier. It was easier I, not to, not I to swear to God. So like I, I heard, I heard OER like a year ago when you mentioned it or whatever on your thing, I had never really, mm -hmm. I didn't really know what the distinction was uh, myself. So, and I, some of the questions I'm asking right now is because I intentionally, this is one of the few times where I intentionally didn't take the time to really learn a lot about something because 
there was no reason for me to have a critical perspective here. I, I'm sincerely learning right now because I, I, I yeah. I'm trying to think of like, because I believe in the notion of uh, like I do. Be- I believe knowledge should be free. I believe that it's like the prerogative of our species to share information. We're a social animal. Like that's how we evolved. You're, you know, that's that's how we passed down our history. That's how we changed culture. That's how culture changes. You know, and when you monetize it, you explicitly select for particular types of outcomes and particular people, and you limit access dramatically. Like you were saying, that results in a lot of dissonance and so, and social problems. So, like from a values perspective, I agree with it. I just I wonder, from a systemic point of view, or even just from a personal point of view, do do you, Ryan Saint S. <laughs> <laughs> do you, what what do you have any areas where you think it's reasonable not to have them considered as OERs or like where 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 do you think from a from a moral ethical just general broad based perspective is the line where it's like yeah this is the type of thing that I think we start moving into where this should be commercialized It's an interesting question um I was raised on Star Trek I, I, <laughs> oh man! Uh, See, I get that because I'm like mega nerd extraordinaire, <laughs> and I have watched all of that shit. But uh, the TNG, you. baby. I mean, like that's like I don't, TNG, I don't get it. I'm gonna everything the later, Kirk, man. There's no what? money. There's nothing. It's like it's. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> think of John Lennon, Lennon, like that level open. Um, yeah. No, I, I get your point. I think there's some some there's some gray areas in here. Um, I have no problem with people making money. None whatsoever. Um, I just think that if you're going to make money using this re- these types of resources, um, using if you're going to use knowledge as your tool to make money, I don't want you to use the knowledge per se. I want you to use your ability to teach it to make money, like I've already said. Um, release all of that stuff. Just go. Let it go um, to me. Um, so like Ryan's saying about, you know, hey, you don't want somebody to steal your stuff and use it in their classroom. I don't want that either unless they're going to come back and do something good with it. Like if Ryan, Ryan is yeah. absolutely the best at delivering there's a whole bunch of things. So here we go. I'm going to bring Ryan in because he's, that's like guest lecture one-on-one. Like you're better than me. I'm going to let you do that. Now I'm going to, that allows me to use my expertise to build on that. Um, so, and, and if you're doing that, I have no problem with it. If you're doing the publisher, I'm going to glean this. Uh, YouTube has protections against that sort of stuff. Like you can't just download a YouTube video. It's actually against their terms, uh, terms of service. So you can't, it's, it's odd because we release OERs all the time, but no one can get them unless they email us and ask for a copy because you can't download them from YouTube legally. Um, used to be able to, but you can't now. I, I use a river. Ah, I I you didn't hear that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. That's, and a lot of people do. It is a violation of the terms of agreement with YouTube. Um, so, uh, so they kind of have a little trick there that they play on people with it. Hey, it's a creative commons license. It's open. Like how? <laughs> like you can't get a copy. Yeah. Of it, yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, anyway, it's what you could do with it. If you do use a ripper and things like that, they'll just hammer you if they want to. It's just a bunch of legalese. But anyway, back to the moral piece. I don't have any problem with people releasing stuff. Um, I guess it starts to spiral into a bigger question. Let's say we're talking physics. Uh, do we release everything about how to make an atomic bomb? I don't know. <laughs> oh, I, man. You know, that's an interesting moral question. I, where's I like that it, yeah. layer? I Where's mean, I had limit? a copy of the Anarchist Cookbook when I was like 11, so I, mean, I don't you know. You too. That's awesome. I, I'm <laughs> like, the only person I've ever met that had a copy of that besides myself. <laughs> Didn't everybody? I feel like I, that was that was like internet dial-up. Every middle school boy in on earth in America had a copy of that thing. Okay, but anyway, I, like, this was pre... I was like, let's see, middle school was 90 for me, 91. So Yeah, mine was 96. So, I mean, I'm yeah, not that far not behind. Too far behind. All right. So yeah, I did with the internet. <laughs> we were sliding that puppy under people's desks. For, so. for me, I don't know if this counts as like a justification on the moral side of it, but for me, it's been, um, even with the YouTube standards license, it's out there. You can grab it. You can link it. You can share it. You can do whatever the hell you want. And like, that's part of YouTube <laughs> for me and like sharing online video. And then for me, it was trying to figure out like, where's this balance of the amount of stuff that's free versus the amount of stuff that's paywalled. And even the stuff essentially that I do on the DOABA that maybe like we've got tomorrow a member meetup or the next day, it's like members get it a little bit sooner and oh, yeah. they really know that they could wait. Maybe that's something you want to do, but like it's, it's, it's going to be published and accessible. The only place that I've paused that so far was on the, the on location, really high quality stuff. And part of that was just like the, the sheer amount of, um, Two things, the sheer amount of dollars spent to even produce and get that going and then um, was like a whole different level. 
And then I do have this, this will be like etched in internet history. Um, I had a, like a conversation with Sarah, my partner on that. I'm like, Hey, God forbid something happens to someone that we're, you know, highlighting in this project, like Pat, I want to be able to push this thing out there. And it's like a part of their like legacy. And so it was kind of like, for me, this deferred, like, can I, can I balance out, I guess two things, can I balance out like the, the access now and the free material and paid? And then can I, in hindsight, make sure that I've always got it kind of a bail option to where I'm like, yo, it's not freely accessible. Um, and I don't know, like that comes out of the idea of my idea of just cash is cash lets me do more things. Um, I'm not rich. I won't be rich off of this sort of stuff. Um, but, but it allows it, 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 it fuels the fire to, to be able to create more. Um, that's what I see folks like you all, like you're, you're doing more with less for sure on my, than what I'm doing right now. Like, does that make sense? Um, and so I look at like, I could, I need to be more of like, am I as efficient as you all? Like you all are creating more. I've monetized some aspects. You have it. Like <laughs> I still, I still think about this stuff, I guess, if that makes sense. It, I, I don't know. I, it's a tough call. I, there's no right answer. Every single person ideas are a dime a dozen, man. Ideas are a dime a dozen, man. People have like you, come on, you, you follow the same stuff. Like, Every there's so many people that have ideas like so fucking what like I, that's why I think people get overprotected about their ideas. But what really matters is execution. And, and that's what Ryan was saying, I think, in terms of like where the monetization comes into, in, into play, in my opinion, too, is the technique, like the, the, the actual expertise is not knowing a thing. Anyone can take an idea and memorize it. But the application, the articulation, the, the technique, the, the actual art of the delivery, the art of of executing and all those things. That's what makes an individual have the value that they can bring to. Yeah. And that's, that's where monetization. That's what Ryan was getting at with the professors. Absolutely. uh, Cause Sitecore um, does some paid uh, things, services. Yeah. We got the, let's see, New York state association for behavior analysis um, uh, contracted with us to do those three uh, ABA is everywhere videos uh, so but the part of our contract was right off the bat we said this has to be released on a cc by a license we built it straight into the contract um which it was uh, not sure they completely understood what that was up front but we made sure it was in there and they agreed to it so we didn't really worry about pushing the explanation of what a cc by was um, past that um so so yeah we'll, we'll happily do contract work and then of course if they this must be closed. Okay, fine. Like if it's, yeah, this is a $40,000 project and uh, you know, like the uh, team on location stuff. I mean, (laughs) you have to be able to recover those costs. And if you don't have some angel investor or some benefactor that's paying for all that, how do you put food on your table? So, so in our world, it's not Star Trek yet. You don't just go hit the replicator button and get your food. You, you have to eat. You know, and you have to buy that stuff at the store. So I, I have no problem with um, somebody making a pay-for product. Um, we just have the means yeah. to do it. The yeah, other it's way. yeah, it's interesting to me. Um, I've I've been able to just kind of avoid the the any criticism or issues for the most part. We had a little bit on the on location stuff, but I've got plans to try to alleviate that more over time and like drop the cost as well. Um, so yeah, it's, it's it's something that I've. I've thought about a number of times and I still haven't come to terms with like exactly where's my line. (laughs) Um, Like I I live it day by day, but it's hard to articulate, Mm -hmm. I guess. It's very hard to articulate. Uh, There are some dissemination grants out there, right? That can help for the front end costs. There are. Of creating things. Yeah. Like I think Saba has a dissemination grant. That's how that's in a New York state association. uh, And I saw got got a Saba grant and then, used some of that money to um, hire us for some videos. Um, so yeah, it's all grants. That's actually how we, Pardon? that's actually, we, we started the, uh, why we do, we do podcasts off of a $500 dissemination of behavior analysis grant out of ABI okay. as well. Um, and so it paid essentially for our first year of like hosting on the website sure. and some other things like that. Um, so yeah, there's some stuff out there. There's like, I'm sure I could, work really hard and hustle and find something for like the production cost of like what we did out in with Pat in Omaha, but you're talking just like such different cash amounts there. Yes. So there's cash there, but it's uh <laughs> everyone that starts things up right now is doing it partially because of what Dimitri was talking about of the love of the passion of creating yep. stuff. There's not the money in it. <laughs> love the game, baby. <laughs> it, 
Love the yeah, game. Yeah, love the game. There's a little bit, little bit of opportunities to do contract yeah. work or like special things <clears throat> here and there, but um, yeah, you so qualify as automatic reinforcement. Like, well, you guys get contract work. <laughs> 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 Fuck you, man. <laughs> so, yeah, oh, until, man. and until somebody pipes up and creates an endowment for the dis- for the dissemination, you know, I mean, uh, who's going to be the person that does the hundred thousand dollar donation? Like, right. I mean, we heard about that recently, I'm sure. Um, uh, and then, yeah. so who's going to do that for the disseminate? You know, that was for Saba, of course. So that's pretty darn close, but um, when is that going to be 5 million? When is that going to, when is that endowment going to be big enough to actually have an impact? When is the Gates foundation going to put up a grant opportunity that says your science can change the world. Here's a hundred million to do it. You know, that, that, when you start getting money like that, that's when you can start to affect change. You know, we were affecting change with 30 plus million and we were still using, we were still using uh, um, OERs to pull it off. Um, and we, then we did another project that was all over Africa where we were doing digital stuff, education as well. And it was really complex and awesome, but it was all um, faculty recording themselves like this, doing the teaching and then burning that to CD, sticking it in the mail and firing it all across the continent. Um, so there was some really cool stuff that, that, that can happen digitally and remotely, but you need, somebody's got to pay. And that's, that's the world we live in. Somebody's got to pay. Um, on a different note, is there a, is there any type of research on a comparative analysis between conventional educational paywalled stuff versus OERs? Like, are they as effective as learning tools? I know that Veronica yeah. Howard was talking some about just the, the, I don't remember exactly. I'll find this so we can link the article, but there is basically benefits on the number of people that can access it and start to learn in the first place. So there was this like, yes, people are going to learn more because it's more accessible was what I distinctly remember. But in terms of the core content itself, um, I don't think there's like, how do you study that? That's a quality. It comes back question. to the quality. Yeah. yeah it's a very, and how is it delivered and under what context? Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, uh, Ryan's referring to the, the article by uh, Dr. Howard. Um, and then in there, there's some amazing references about um, the study that he's specifically referring to that shows that the use of OERs increases educational outcomes. Um, and I'm, the, the authors are drawing a blank. I was going to get a screenshot of it earlier and I completely forgot. Uh, so there, there's a lot of, there's some good research on there. Uh, again, you can go to the OER SIGS website and you can get, somehow start Facebook and then um, so the special interest group for the OERs and then you can get to Veronica's article from there and that has all the resources and all the references and stuff. Lots of really good stuff. One of the things I forgot to mention for the audience is if, uh, if not, not that you should do this and I'm not advocating for it, but I know that there's this thing called Sci-Hub that uh, Sci-Hub that breaks down the paywall pretty substantively for you. Yeah. Um, so you know, I'm not advocating for it. I just heard this on the internet. You know, it's these these these, these hooligans <laughs> who give science away for free on the internets. So, uh, Sci Hub, check it out. Research don't check it out. Re, yeah, don't check it out. That's not. not <coughs> don't check it out. But there's sure. other ones too that you should not look yeah. up if you're after books or things like that. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. They may or not may or may not be based in Russia. <laughs> you know, what yeah. Else exactly. Like you know. Yeah. That's. <laughs> It's so amazing what is, how quick content I feel like, pops up there. I feel like all of us, I feel like all of us have not thought about using Sneaky these before. Russians, man. What, what, uh, what, if, if you could tell anybody like, okay, what do we need to know about our OERs that we haven't talked about? Like, what are we, is it, have we missed anything? Like, Hey, I'm new to this game. I love the idea of OERs. Uh, or you're new to the yeah. uh, area. What do you need to know about it? Like one thing talked about. you do not get what you pay for. Yeah that and, and there's a certain truth to it okay let's let's be 100% honest like Ryan's not going to go out and create a million dollar video for zero dollars I'm not going to do it either right so there's that certain there's a layer there but in terms of you can get some of the most amazing content for free and it can be open you don't have to have that perceived value associated with things um, it is natural in the world that we live in we've been conditioned for it um, I can it, it, you know, you charge somebody a certain amount of money for the one product and charge a different rate for the same product and the ones that's more expensive will sell more. Makes no sense for the same product, right? Um, but so this, you get you get what you pay for it. That's not true. Like maybe in some cases, but in other cases, there's some amazing flipping resources out there. So right off the bat, look at it, evaluate it. 
Who teaches it? Who it, does it align with other content? Is it referenced a thousand times? Is everybody saying go check out the Daily BA videos because he's smart, uh, or is it just because he's good looking? Like, which one of those is the <laughs> you know why are people saying go look at their resources? So don't do your do your research, but um, and don't just trust the fact that an OER is good either. Like, there's um, without naming names, there's some crap out there. Hmm. So be mean? careful. What's that? I mean, this is a controversial exchange. Now I want to know. I have not, to be honest with you, I can't remember <laughs> the names, but um, it wouldn't take you very long to figure it out. Um, just, there, there's I'm just, just some people just don't produce great content. They can't get it published. Um, so then they just release it on their own. Um, so, uh, the, which brings it back to the peer, the peer review, right? So just because yeah. I did a study in my basement with my dog, is that worth sharing with anyone? Because, you know, um, yeah, should it be peer reviewed if, before it gets out there and adds to the body of knowledge that the world has. Um, and then should people be trained about how to um, read it and understand it and read those dry old EAB articles, um, the Siegel 1975s and things like that that just make you want to pull your eyebrows out. But it's <clears throat> those Azure articles, man. A lot of going. bad researchers are good marketers, and a lot of good <clears throat> researchers are bad marketers. Yeah. I think that uh, value that point. value thing is such an amazing point that matters so much because all the studies they do that show that people select the more expensive thing, even if they're identical objects, which is so crazy. Yeah, like you could literally present someone to the, the same thing against itself and just make one cost more than the other and they will still select the more expensive one, which is like, what? Yeah, but I mean, that just tells you so much of how much perception plays into the game. Oh, huge. And, uh, I used, uh, yeah. As an example, I do uh, woodwork, right? And I used to work in a, a, a store called uh, Woodcraft. And I was moonlighting out there. And one of the things we sell is pen kits to make pens. So people sell pens. So this one guy was having a hell of a time selling pens. And so I, said, I said, come here. And he goes, what's up, doc? I said, "Don't stop selling your scent pen for 20 bucks. Sell it for 100. <laughs> I said, no. He goes, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm like, just, just do it. Meet me halfway. Put a $60 price tag on it. See what happens. And he comes back a couple weeks later. He's like, I sold more than I've ever sold in my life. <laughs> it's like, crazy, dude. It's, 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 yes, this, it's, weird, it's this it luxury happens. psychology, man. It's yeah. it's materialism. It's all this stuff. It, it, it gives the illusion of status. It, it carries with you add other contingencies to that, that pair with the item other than the satisfaction of just owning it or the filling the particular you, you, you functional need that it has. It has other things like it's not just utility at that point. So like. Uh, it's it's unfortunate, but it is the world that we live in. The other thing too is the you know which we already talked about, but I kind of want to review because I think it matters. Is that like the ego involved in creating the paywall on behalf of people that are intellectuals and or academics? And like this, in my opinion, uh, you know, a conversation like this, or even just like the work that you do as an example, um, as like a, you know, you'll get credit. Like the, the need for admiration or the need for like making sure you get the attribution that you want, of course, matters. Everyone should deserves the attribution for the work that they produce. But um, being so hyper protective over it to the point where you create that disconnect, I think really limits the opportunities and the options. And I really think, too, it would really it would actually add to the meritocracy of it. I think it would really take down some of the it would really dismantle some of those barriers because then the cream really would rise to the top yeah. then it would the, the bureaucratic controls that are out there would, would be eliminated a lot faster um so that's if you want to democratize knowledge you know and if you do care about that you should be pushing for these types of ideas in my opinion um otherwise you're just you're, you're virtue signaling you're just being full of shit so um i totally love both of those things i'm sorry is that too much being i'm in a mood shit, today yes. bro i'm in a mood today bro like <laughs> It's hard. The world's on fire. We're living through the apocalypse. Like, I mean, like, there was an article that, like, there's literally a, there's a fucking asteroid about a thousand miles away from us, which sounds like far away, but in space, that's not. That's not close. far away yeah. at all. What, so was we're like, fake? was the fake news thing about the rumblings in Yellowstone? Is that, is that, is there, is that, I don't know if that's real news? or not. I saw that too, but I didn't investigate the realness <laughs> on that. If Yellowstone blows But up, I trust yeah. in you. Right. <laughs> Dude, if Yellowstone, if Yellowstone blows, blows up, so blows up. We're done we first. Like I'm We're closest. Done. At least at that point, we know to just grab a beer and yeah. go hug each other yeah. and, and, and enjoy the last Do four all hours the heroin. or whatever it is. All of it. <laughs> <laughs> like, YOLO. That implies you know where to get it. <laughs> I don't know, man. 
I'm sure there's a guy, but I mean, there's like, a person somewhere. At that point, it's legal because like there's no fucking. Rules. It'll become open access. Then. <laughs> yeah, then it's an open. <laughs> it's an open recreational resource. It's an, it's an ORR. Man, <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah dude. It's, a, I mean, like it's strange a, times we're living. The in. day drug dealers became open education <laughs> or open resources. <laughs> uh, all the ayahuascas, but yeah. So like, I don't know. It's uh, it's it's just it's a weird world we're living in, man. It's just, and I I just think that. If we can any 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 positive way we can redirect ourselves away from the algorithms and the and the the rage machines and the, and the just the the fear mongering that is out there because I mean like it's it's hard to watch no one should look away from it you know but also a continuing ongoing bombardment of it is a little bit it's overstimulating in a way that creates I mean a very it's a very difficult to function like I, I I you know personally it's been difficult for me to function just looking at it constantly so the idea of being able to go to Sitecore, being able to open sure. up a podcast being able to watch the daily va going to anything else that fits within a particular interest area that is stimulating in that way helps you know for a moment provide some reprieve and also builds up your knowledge base so that sure. hopefully when we emerge from the dust cloud of, of this <laughs> chaos you know you know we'll, we'll be better for it um one can only hope but i mean that's that's what I, my, my my kind of position on that is. Thanks a lot I, for doing this, Ryan. I feel like yeah. so much. I hope we do. I hope we did you justice. Oh, that's great. Like I love this. <laughs> like I'd come back anytime. Like I'd yeah. uh, talk yeah. about anything behavior analytic all day long, and hell, I'll yeah. talk about anything. But that's yeah, uh, yeah especially this time. So, uh, yeah, no, that's, there's cool things. Super out there. cool. Yeah, much appreciate it. I've got a um, a few things we'll point people towards, including the Open Educational Resource Special Interest Group as a part of the Association of Behavior Analysis Ooh. International. That's nice. right. The OER SIG yep. of ABI. <laughs> um, it's free and to join. I found, yes, it's free to join, which is super cool. Veronica Howard, uh, the doctor you'd mentioned that's also a part of that, has a YouTube channel with a few different things um, that are hosted there as well. So we'll, we'll make sure to link those so people can go explore abundantly not all the different materials not yeah genuine yeah may or may not sh- share your link it's secret link <laughs> put it in white like on a white background yeah. make it hidden <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> all right thanks yeah, for being thanks on for me. Me. 